Hi everyone. Good morning. 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 <clears throat> Thank you for joining us on this lovely Saturday morning. I know how important a weekend is for all of you, but thanks for giving us the time. And for people who want to join us, your friends, please guide them to go towards Living My Promise Facebook page, where there is a live stream happening of this event. I'm going to take a minute to introduce Living My Promise. After that, we can continue our discussion. Just for those who are not familiar with it, uh, you could have a look at the website livingmypromise.org to understand more about the pledge. But essentially, Living My Promise invites all India's well-to-do to commit more than half of their wealth to philanthropy, either during their lifetime or in their will to a cause of their choice. Living My Promise is a self-driven initiative started by one of the promises, Girish Patra and has now been championed by 83 others as well. Living My Promise is inspired by examples of millions of people of all income levels who give generously and often at a great personal sacrifice to make the world a better place to live. It is aiming over time to help shift the social norms of philanthropy towards giving more, giving sooner, and giving smarter. Anyone with a net worth of over one crore can sign this pledge and can make the promise. This initiative is essentially a community of promises. It is not an NGO. This promise is a moral commitment that you make to yourself and to the others in the public way. And you decide whom to give, when to give, how to give, and how much to give. We hope that through Living My Promise, we can create a community of like-minded individuals who'd like to do more and also inspire millions of others to re-benchmark their levels of giving. Once again, I'd request you to please visit the website livingmypromise.org and reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to explain the pledge and to help you understand this a little better. On that note, we are moving our conversation with these five young minds who are here. Once again, a gentle reminder, <coughs> the session is on live stream on Facebook. As parents, we all want to do what's best for our children. You know, in fact, towards this, we spend most of our younger life working really hard, buying that home, getting our kids get best education possible, maybe a grand wedding, or maybe even, you know, leaving some money for generations to come beyond us. That's what we've all been doing. But today I'm going to talk to five of these young adults whose parents have thought slightly differently. And I want to use the opportunity to hear it from them. So we have Mihika Miranda, Aditya Mandele, Vishi Bhatra, Divan Turakya, and Urvi Gupta joining us. Before we get in, can I please ask you to introduce yourself very briefly to the audience? Anything that you want to say about yourself, please. Urvi, you want to start? Sure. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Urvi and uh, I just graduated from Delhi University this past May and I'm a trained Kathak dancer, but yeah, nice to be here. Thank you. Rishi? Hey, hi everybody, uh, this is Rishi this side. I am, I've graduated, yes, I, I have also graduated. Uh, I've done my uh, bachelor's in hotel management from Christ University and I aspire to become a chef. And it's good to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Vivan? Um, I'm Vivan. I'm, uh, I'm in the Dhirubhai Ambani School. I'm still doing the IBDP program. And yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Mihika? Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, I'm Mihika Miranda. I'm an arts administrator and performer. And I studied at Franklin and Marshall College in the US and in and then since then, I've been working in fundraising and development for theater organizations across Pennsylvania, Chicago, and most recently, Mumbai. Uh, most recently, I was with G5A Foundation for Contemporary Culture in uh, Burrell and working in a fundraising capacity there. And now I'm about to start my master's in arts administration and arts management and entrepreneurship at the New School in New York next week. Wow. Aditya? 
Uh, hi, my name is Aditya. I head the creative team at a creative agency called Shebang. Uh, we're a six-year-old tottering that's growing up way too fast. <laughs> uh, some of the some of the brands that have had fun, uh, you know, building over the last couple of years are Fevi Call, Amazon Prime Video, Mattel Toys, Nivea, Castrol. So it's been a mixed bag. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a real job that uh, is a lot of fun, and I don't I I can't believe that someone actually thought it was a good idea to pay someone to do this, but I'm glad they did. <laughs> right, thank you. Lovely to hear about all your accomplishments and dreams. Um, moving on, I'm just again sorry. Another reminder for people to join our Facebook Live to stream to see this event being streamed online. So I want to begin by, you know, you all know living my promise. So I'm just going to begin straight by what does inheritance really mean to you all? Um, anybody can answer. Um, what does that. it mean? Um, sure. Yeah. So I think like there, there are different forms of inheritance you have. Mm -hmm. I think and what we're most used to is the financial inheritance, which is where our we, we assume that our parents are going to leave some money for us in case of an emergency, in case you know, we do need that financial help once they're gone. Um, but I think what my family has been very, uh, em has emphasized a lot is beyond the financial inheritance and what are you actually taking away from your experience being your parents' kid? What are they mm -hmm. leaving with you? And I think in our family, it's a lot to do with education it's a lot to do with experiences and that is equally important so I think that's something that I would rather hold on to um, in our family I've, I've also like noticed how well not just in our family but in life in general how the concept of inheritance and expecting that inheritance can pull families apart and mm -hmm. that that has always left a sour taste in my mouth uh, in in our family uh, our parents are like, no, what we are going to invest in is your education. And then you will use that education to have a good job. And then you make your own money and you then look after yourself. And right. I, that's something that I very much believe in now, because at the end of the day, it, especially once you join the workforce, you realize how much work you've put in. And then you obviously want to enjoy reap the benefits of that. So hmm. You, with, when your parents are you, your parents have worked hard for what they've done mm. they should enjoy that themselves during their lifetime um i think i i would like i would like them to enjoy that right now and whatever mm -hmm. inheritance the educational inheritance the experiential inheritance that is something i would i know i want to walk away with sure would we you want to add to that your perspective on what inheritance means to you yeah, so I think personally, um, I would say that for me, inheritance, obviously, like Mehika said, there's obviously the financial aspect of it, you know, in terms of assets and whatever they leave behind. But I think more than that, inheritance, what I've inherited uh, or what I would like, I would hope to inherit from my parents is essentially the value system that I've yeah. grown up with and, and the, the, the upbringing, the so quality is like, you know, being able to see good in others or having a fighting spirit. I think that that upbringing, that kind of outlook on life, that value system is what I think uh, inheritance means to me and is what I think I would want to, you know, maybe eventually pass on. But yeah, I think there's always, we always, I think we have a little bit of a linear view of inheritance. And I think it's important to kind of take into account, especially, um, you know, talking about privilege and everything. I think it's very important to take into account like the larger perspective. So, yeah. Sure. Any of you want to add, Rishi, Vivan, to yes, your perspective on what's inheritance? Yes. Uh, Ma'am, so as uh, Urvi and Mika, they told rightly, we would want to inherit certain good values from our parents and I personally feel that uh, it's actually a good thing that the parents, like their generation, they are understanding and they are putting certain good values to their children so that, you know, it passes on rather than passing on money or, or any other financial, they're passing on certain good values that they would want their future kin to, you know, take up and inherit those certain values. Mm -hmm. And that, that molds the person into a different perspective. You know, it, it, it allows them to think in a different direction so that's what 
I mean, totally. I that that's all I have to say. Right. Yes, Vivan, you want to say something? I no, I, yeah, yeah. I think I completely agree with everything they said. Like it's the value mm. that we are actually going to take with us. Something that's financial is temporary. Like no mm-hmm. matter, but the values you take, it'll be passed on from generation to generation. So something as small as a uh, gratitude, like saying thank you to uh, a watchman when you're like walking down or outside the building, that's a value that you want to inherit from your parents. So you want to pass on to your kids, and mm-hmm. uh, that's something that's going to stay. So I think that's the most important kind. So we we've, we've talked a little bit about inheritance. What about privilege? Aditya, you want to? uh think about or tell us what's your perspective on being privileged yeah uh, i'll actually build from you know the sure. last question. go ahead yeah. um yeah. so i think you know a life <laughs> in the whatever little time that we have on the planet is extremely precious right and there's there's so much uh that that is thrown at you that you go through and i think more than while we obsess over genetics and we while we obsess over trying to take that dna strand from uh, from our parents and our lineage i think uh, the fact that if we are able to pick up that source code that our parents or our family is able to pick up over the course of their life i mm. think uh, that becomes very rich right so mm. i say that 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 is your inheritance you know particularly mm. i think it's given me a little bit of perspective on this because you know i recently lost some people in my family and you know mm-hmm. every day i i my thing is how do i keep them alive right in mm-hmm. in terms of like like uh, you know uh, a lot of like what we said uh, i it's the value system it's the it's the oh. way they lived uh, you right. know it's, it can you try and replicate that uh, in your life so i think that becomes a big part of what inheritance is but mm-hmm. that said i am also extremely aware that it's a very privileged thing to say it is a very privileged yeah. thing uh, it comes it comes from a you know we are we are in a place where we can afford to say that uh, sure. and uh, i think that brings me to your your the question that you just threw at me which is what is privilege you know uh, and i think a lot of people tend to categorize it as a current state or condition you know what your right. net worth is or what your pres where what your current social milieu is or what whatever, whatever mm. that may be mm. but privilege is accrued over time you know it's 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 smaller investments that have been made into you that accumulate mm. over time mm. which is why even if you were to take that factor that puts sure. you in that case today even if you were to take that inheritance away from me today you yeah. won't take away my privilege absolutely uh, Mm. uh because uh, it's a it's a multitude of factors right some of them very complex sociological psychological factors but uh it's 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 that path that you've been put into thrown into you know uh, yeah. all of us at least so uh, as on on the call we've been very very fortunate to have received great educations been put okay. into backgrounds that allow us to interact with fantastic minds that really expand the way we think Hmm. all of those things are privilege you know all of those things that enable you to have a to live in a certain social fabric that enable yep. you to think a certain way to feel empowered to do certain things all of that is privilege right. uh so uh, i think it's it's something uh, to be very fortunate about i know it's it's, a, it's it gets thrown around is a dirty word a lot and i think that's pro- that's because unfortunately it's not equitable you know uh, hmm. the effects of privilege aren't bad but the fact is that you know everybody doesn't get that same starting point that's hmm. what yeah no i think you put it very beautifully that you know by even with or without inheritance the privilege that you have doesn't go away what we right. have today but i would really want to ask that by having an inheritance do you think you get a head start a little better a little bit more stable that has it helped you any so, um, you want to answer i, I think yeah, i sure. i would like to start but uh, yeah. so i think uh, uh, that actually ties in with what you think like inheritance of privilege mm. means essentially and right. then you can you can discuss its implications but i think privilege essentially starts at birth matlab mm. it it depends mm. on where you're born because absolutely um, mm. if you're born in a good family mm. that is able to provide you mm. a good education like 
Aditya said you you're able to exist in a certain kind of and quality of social mm-hmm. fabric. Uh, mm-hmm. So then it starts at birth, and then uh, you there, there's your head start. You know, mm-hmm. you know, you were born mm-hmm. into you were not born uh, with with the struggle to survive. You can you mm-hmm. can actually work on growing because your mm-hmm. survival is guaranteed. Mm-hmm. So I think why and but that being said, uh, while it may give us a head start. i don't think success um is guaranteed just because we have privilege we still have our own journeys to to hmm. whatever success looks like to us but for sure i would have to i mean it would be it's it's a little bit almost obvious to me to think that just because i was born in a family that lives in delhi for example you know i i'm able to afford a roof over my head i have good food on my plate hmm. that's a huge mm. head start in and mm. of itself mm. Mm. so you know going with what just continuing on what you said success what does that mean to each one of you i'd really like to hear from what you think as success we want you want to start you've been a little silent i'll, I'll start with you okay. what does success mean to you and you're also at the time where you're just moving into college and i'm sure you have lots of dreams what does it really mean successful um, so i mean for someone who doesn't know what he wants to do i don't think success <laughs> has a, a very okay. definitive definition i think i would take like the cliched way out and say that i think success matters like with what you're taking with you and not what like you are like who right. you become is what success is like defined to be but i think what you're learning from it ultimately defines how successful you are if you take a very like a hard path of way to go somewhere and you're learning nothing then however like good your journey is and you're not doing anything it's not going to make you successful so um i would say success is where you are not comfortable with where you are but you're happy like you always want to strive to do that a little bit more because the moment you are fine with where you are i don't think life is going to be fun anymore so mm. when you want to keep on moving ahead that's where like your plate of success is sure does she want to add to it anybody else mehika yes ma'am sure Yeah. Ma'am, so uh, success, what how I would define it in a way, ma'am. First of all, it's not that always we would be successful. I mean, you become successful once you face a failure. So yeah. I think the part where you it's like you realize you hit bottom and then you know you how you you know channelize your path and grow ahead in the future. and hmm. your journey your experiences how you you meet different people you learn something from them you teach them something so. i would say success is um, uh, it's something that um, it totally i mean it, it helps you as an individual it it boosts your uh, what do you call in our values it helps you achieve so much more in life hmm. so i mean i mean your goal is it's not like always you want to achieve your goal you have become successful you your success never stops in, in a way sure yeah yeah Mika, you wanted to add something to it, yeah. Honestly, mm. am I happy? That's mm. that's for me is what success is. Sure. Hmm. Happy at any point in time, doing what you like. Maybe. And also, and also, what you're not yeah. happy. Like sometimes, like you're you're not comfortable doing what you want. As as Jishi and Vivan beautifully said, sometimes mm. you're not happy. You're thrown out of your comfort zone. But again, mm. it's so important for you to step out of your comfort zone to see if you can be happy beyond that. um mm. and life is not going to be the same my god how boring would it be so <laughs> thing is every every few years you're going to i asked a i asked a former mentor of mine not former mentor he's still my mentor but former uh, mm. boss of mine and mm. i asked him like how do you enjoy how do you keep enjoying your job you've been here for 13 years and he said well every 3 years something new comes up and i have mm. to adapt to it and that's what keeps me excited about it and mm. i realized and right enough like 3 years after we had that conversation covid happened so everything had to change in his job so that mm. new thing automatically happened he had to rethink and restructure how he how he uh, handled life but um mm. but yeah as long as you're happy and everybody's happiness is dependent on their own experience their own situation 
um sure and you can't compare you that's one thing i would say you cannot compare Absolutely. your own happiness mm. and your own success to someone else's mm. um sorry i thought i was going to be like really brief about this but clearly not um, no that's fine <laughs> just having a conversation of course <laughs> yeah but go ahead yeah. i realize i realize that in college because we we were free to choose whichever classes we wanted to take yes we were in the same major but even within the same major you never had someone taking the exact same course schedule as you were Mm. and the same activities you were involved with were different so suddenly i was like i there's nobody i can actually compare myself to because i'm so uniquely different mm. and my journey is so different my journey is going to impact me so i can't compare myself to like what aditya has gone through or what urvi has gone through but i can still ask myself am i happy doing what i'm doing Absolutely. and yeah. am i and if i am that's that's success for me Yeah, I guess you define it as a very personal thing that what it means to you and it can be as you all have said at any point on the spectrum but as long as you are happy and you think you're successful I think that makes it uh worth a while. So now moving to another big part of the discussion that we started this conversation about is this living my promise pledge. Um I'm sure at different points in time your parents have spoken to you about that. um i would like to hear from preferably all of you one after the other like when did you first hear about living my promise pledge what did your parents tell you and what was your reaction you were like oops i'm not going to get anything or afterwards thinking about it you felt okay maybe that was okay i don't know i'm just very curious to hear when did you hear what was your reaction and what do you really think about it today if it's been a few years ago just just your experience and uh, before we start just want to once again remind our audience that we are on living my promise facebook page live stream uh, i hope you're listening because this is really the most important part of the conversation on how these people have thought about their parents giving their wealth to charity so anybody but i would love to hear from all all of you one after the other i think it's the most important part of the conversation today So I threw a huge tantrum, and I was like, "How can you do this?" No, I'm kidding. Mm-hmm. Um, it was <laughs> one of the most. Um, it was just a very casual conversation. Mom and Dad asked us, "Are you comfortable with if we do this?" We they told us about what living my promise was, and I was really impressed. I said, "This is amazing! My gosh, to get so many people in the same organization and to hold each other accountable in a way, I think that's really important in a in a especially when you're when you're." starting something new in the sense of giving away your personal wealth um mm. so i love i love that it was it was people who ha- were holding each other accountable to do this um but yeah it was a very casual conversation they asked us are you comfortable with it and we said yeah why not there's i mean this is your money it's not ours we've never had that conversation about what what are we owed um and mm. you do what you need with it and we will support that Yeah. yeah yeah it was uh, mm. it was simple for me too it was like just mm. like any given tuesday i was sitting having breakfast <laughs> my mom popped up and you know we were having coffee and she just <laughs> uh threw this at me at the breakfast table and it was a mm-hmm. very <laughs> it was uh, with cereal i was uh, you know digesting this piece of information but it was it was <laughs> it was uh, it was very seamlessly done and i felt like and of course she gave me a minute to process it and she was like you know I I have not mm. made the decision this is what I'm thinking mm. about of course I want mm. you to think about it and factor it in and she was very kind uh mm. but uh, I don't think I needed that time you know it was like Mehika mm. said it was like right off the bat it was a fantastic mm. initiative it was uh, you know a very very well thought out engineered designed uh mm. so um I, I was like hey do this i mean it sounds fantastic and you know last person you need to worry about is me and i just was I felt touched that she was because, like Mika said, it's not our money. You know, we have sure, no right sure. to do anything about it. Uh, I know that our culture puts us in a place where we feel like we have stock over it. But mm. uh, um, you know, it's your life. So uh, mm. honestly, it was. I, I mean, I didn't even bat an eyelid. Yeah. Sure. Would we? Sure. So uh, for me, actually, this conversation happened over email. which oh, was wow. interesting okay. um, but i think so uh, i got an email from them with like the history of living my mm. promise and so uh, beneath that i was like oh 
this is something we're thinking about what do you think no mm-hmm. pressure nothing it was very casual and I, I i actually i think the funny part about it being on email is that like i have that memory with me but i remember writing back um so this is great and i know mm-hmm. that my net worth right now is like 2 rupees and a packet of chips but i think <laughs> eventually even i would like to sign up so you yeah, and it was just that that because it felt right it made sense that mm. um and you know like we were talking about our privilege and inher- inheritance earlier i already mm. have had my head start just by virtue of where i was born sure. and i don't need anything to add to that anything further than that can and should be what i earn for myself mm. and earn in not just in money sense but experience wise and value wise so it made sense it was it felt right honestly mm. as cliche as that sounds yeah yeah rishi yeah hi. yeah hi mm. uh, ma'am so uh, this happened somewhere around 2018 i remember so dad called me to the room he's like there's something i want to tell you so he opened <laughs> the living my promise page he showed me okay so we are planning both mom and dad were there they're like we are planning to mm. you know pledge a 50 50% of our wealth and mm. for a second i think back of the mind i felt okay like there was that kind of a stoppage or in mind or it was kind of a throwback thing okay okay what if i am not getting anything that was around yeah maybe i would say sure. mature at that time i think there's a kind of a question or it happens like okay is it required i mean what mm. if i suppose emergency comes or what if i need that money somewhere there was in back i didn't throw it out to them but mm. um, so i think how casually i think some what happened like every evening or twice a week mm. me and dad used to go down for a walk and he used to you know build up certain conversations and he used to you know that dad son lecture that happens the beta you come empty handed you're not going to take anything back when you go so he's like mm. why not you know why not take it to a good you know why not donate it somewhere or for something good and mm. so that you know people remember you that you have gone you have you know mm. lived and you have gone with certain good values you have passed on certain mm. good qualities so that is what he wanted to pass on to me and i think it's totally a good thing and that that they are you know they were planning to do this so i mean after slowly slowly i definitely it became a thing that i opened up and yeah sure. go ahead for this so i think that mm. was one of the best things they have done mm. yeah so thank you i mean thank you for sharing that you know that for a minute you feel like oh what's this what am i going to have right i think that it is. happens with all of us and it's very fair vivan mm. what did you what was your experience like so i i don't think i've told my parents like how i felt about it so it was it's only my dad they got to hear it to you on camera now yeah, yes. so <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, i think what rishi said about the one minute thing i don't think i really experienced that because i don't know if it, my dad did, did that by design but he made sure like when i was like okay, 30, okay. 14 years old like he threw the curve ball at me so i was like oh it doesn't matter it's fine like i i don't think i probably have still registered it i might maybe like 5 years down the line be like oh no but mm. i think <laughs> but when i was like right. you know, i was i was genuinely really supportive about it i still am I, i don't think the dynamic has changed in that sense because my mom like jokingly animatedly she's like uh, once you're gone i'd want to travel the world and i won't have anything to do and like so we keep on bringing that up in like jokes and conversation and all of that but i don't think any of us are really going to miss that because all the inheritance and stuff like my education is paid for by that same money and by the time sure. like i might need it i probably want i hope that i've made something of myself that i won't even need the like remaining 50% so hmm. hopefully fingers crossed it like i won't need it so that's why i think the outlook currently is very positive awesome so um you know people who are watching this are posting some questions and there is one question uh just give me a minute uh which is from uh dheeraj who says how would you react if your parents didn't even tell you that they were going to do this this is very hypothetical but you know if you have to think back but one fine day they said guys we've signed the pledge you have nothing left what would you think about i mean it's a little hypothetical but nevertheless take a shot at it uh i think i i uh, like i said <laughs> i i appreciated that they that they spoke to me about it like they like they didn't have to but i felt like it made a mm-hmm. world of a difference uh because sure. you were being considered as part of the decision uh of mm. course like you, know, you, you have no bearing on it but i think it 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 matters you know the way mm. the 
creativity with which it's broken to you and delivered to you and you know all mm. of these exchanges that as i'm hearing about them they're so they're so warm and wholesome uh mm. i think i think that's the common thread right like mm. any of our parents had done it differently it may have irked us a little bit more i think a lot of you mm. know so much of life is about tonality and about how things come to you right mm. uh, mm. i mean you know i, I, I we've been, all been in places in life where what someone has actually said may have made sense but just the way they said it put you off in that moment sure. you know like, hell no <laughs> you know uh, sure. so i i think i think it makes a big difference uh, in right. terms of how, how how you're thinking about that moment because it's a big moment and you know sitting sitting down right. with your is an important part yeah and there's also another question that came about saying that you know now that you know probably the inheritance is quite a few of quite a you know a part of it is going to charity does that mean that you know the expectations of what you should be doing in life is it going to be any different how would you make sure that you fulfill your own aspirations expectations and your parents aspirations expectations keeping aside this that i'm going to have only half of what i thought i should have is there any thoughts on that somebody's uh, there's a question yes, from yes i uh, would like to yes Bipin Mohanty is basically saying, "How do you make your parents and your close one happy?" And you guys, the expectations are going to be different, and you clearly are not going to attribute it to, "Oh, now I have half the wealth, so this is all that I can do." Any thoughts on that, ma'am? So our our careers, I think, you know, shouldn't come in the way when it comes to, you know, considering fifty percent of the wealth or like that is scrapped out. Mm. because they are our dreams i think nobody has the right to you know put a stop mm. that okay money is gone you can't achieve your career because it's okay yeah. if you start from the rock bottom okay maybe your payment is less your salary is less but i think you live your mm. own journey you write your own path you it's like it's like you're 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 writing your own journey so i think that mm. that that you know you cannot connect both the things because it is your what you are you know right. looking forward to do mm. so that shouldn't come in mm. the way mm. yeah and just going off that i think the the, the important word here is expectations and who is creating mm-hmm. those expectations it's society mm. our yeah. families are not creating those expectations on us that like hey you mm. we're giving you less money so now you have to like choose a different career that will make you financially mm. i think all of mm. us have chosen careers that we have or at least educational journeys that we that make us happy i'm in mm. the arts the arts does not pay <laughs> and i'm perfectly <laughs> happy with that because that's what i'm passionate about and my parents are extremely supportive of that um mm. so honestly it's just what is society telling you and do you care enough for that to impact your relationship with money with your parents and with your career mm. yeah i think i think uh, that while these are important conversations both career and inheritance they are mm-hmm. still eventually reflective of the larger dynamic that is in the family right so uh, whether it's a question about oh how would you have reacted uh, if they didn't tell you or if it's a question mm. of you know uh, are you going to do are you expected to do your career any differently i think it has to do with your larger family dynamics and your how how you've been functioning so far as a as a unit and right. so so if so far you've been brought up as part of like a democratic family where everyone has an opinion every opinion holds equal worth things mm. like that i don't think that uh, having or not having that 50% would change anything because like sure. meeka said it's not our parents that are putting that expectation on us because mm. that's not how at least i was raised so mm. uh, you know that shouldn't really change anything and it didn't at least for me right Yeah, so um, there's been a quite a few questions coming up on chat, so they're all eager to hear from you. So I'm going to read one more, and actually there's two more, so we can take it by the way the time goes. Um, Abhishek Malik mm-hmm. says, "Do you think you guys need to have a level of wealth at hand to go at this and do this? And if so, what do you say is that level?" I'm just reading the question as it is without interpreting. So. Do you guys think there think needs to be where, a level of wealth, and what it is? I think that's what I think. What we've been talking about privilege. Um, 
there is some wealth that was obviously invested in us through our education, through contacts that uh, perhaps like our parents introduced us to, and then we were in charge of earning those internships or first jobs, etc. Um, and I think that that is a privilege that we hold and that we have we have it, uh, we've appreciated and we've now made our own paths based off that of the uh, of those stepping stones. So in honest in for in full honesty, yeah, I think there is some amount of wealth that is beneficial. Um, sure. But there's also a degree to which how much wealth like at some point it's like, OK, this is excessive. You don't mm. need to like walk around with designer clothes. You don't need to walk around with um, like weekend getaways abroad. Mm. Like maybe those things could be could be uh, more invested in other causes or other experiences in your life that would benefit you. Um, mm. So I think for I think it's important to just know to like know that like yes, there's a degree to which you can invest in uh, use your wealth to invest appropriately. But then after that, it's up to you about what you want to do with that wealth. Yeah. Um, so what do you think, Vivan? I mean, yeah. what's I yeah. think adding to that, I would probably feel that I'm probably the wrong kind of person to <laughs> like ask this question to. Maybe all of mm-hmm. us, but at least personally, I feel that uh, we already uh, have that privilege. It's been like you, we, like, um, like the education, like, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Ivy or whatever we want, like going abroad, it's not like, it's like free of cost or anything. They've already invested mm-hmm. that amount in us and we probably mm-hmm. wouldn't be where we are if it weren't for them. Like even, uh, like I'm only here because my dad like did this and he did something to allow me to talk to you, right? So all of right. those things that already has been there, I cannot be more happy with where I am right now. And I wouldn't mm-hmm. have any other way, but uh, that basic like baseline of wealth Maybe yeah. ask someone who isn't as privileged as us what mm-hmm. they, the basic necessities are. Maybe that mm-hmm. is a more relevant conversation because we unknowingly are already like using so much of what they have. Personally, mm-hmm. I, uh, we don't talk about like finances too much in our like family because it's in like the back end kind mm-hmm. of. Way. So I just know what's at the front. So I don't even know how much is going into like my classes, my school, mm-hmm. but. Uh, someone who needs it more than I do and who doesn't sure. have it, maybe asking them what they feel their baseline is makes a lot of sense. Hmm. I think uh, just to also add to that. Sure, uh, please do, yes. We may have to give some credit to Living My Promise also because the way they've designed the program, uh, they hmm. put thought into having a cutoff uh, you know, uh, line, right? And whatever that hmm. may be, the assumption is that, you know, if hmm. you have a network of X, Y, Z, uh, mm. then you have you have been able to give your children a comfortable starting point uh, mm. and and from there you know things become a little bit easier I think a whole mm. aspect about big aspect about giving is how to ensure that you're being kind to yourself while being kind mm. to others so I think that kind of shows yeah. that you know over the course of that life you've been able to be kind to yourself and your loved ones but mm. now it's time to be kind to someone else right yeah, I think that that really nicely summarizes the pledge part for people who want to know more. And I'm again going to use the opportunity to please ask everyone to visit the page to understand this a bit more. It is a self-driven initiative and it is a pledge that we do to ourselves and to the public and to oneself. Um, on that note, there's one more question coming in before we move to the other part of it. Um, there's a question from Veena Shetty who says, it's always good to be optimistic, but what if there is a series of failures knock your doors? Would you repent about not inheriting the wealth from your parents? Or what if they are not able to support you financially? How prepared are you for all these? <clears throat> that is an excellent question. And that is something <laughs> that I have thought about. Okay. Um, I think in what I do for myself in that scenario is just constantly question. Well, one, I, I, my parents are listening right now. They're probably like, Mika doesn't do this. <laughs> but I, um, I'm, I do, I do like think about my savings. I do think about like, how much am I saving? Like, do I really need to buy this? Or can this actually be invested in 
something in the future. Um, mm. And that's something I think I get from my parents. Um, so that is one way I'm dealing with it personally. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I'm also, um, yeah, it, it's just about what can you do with whatever you've been given mm. and you know where i'm i i'm about three years into being a working adult which means that mm. i can actually do something with my salary uh, but mm-hmm. that's something that may come to bite me in in the future but mm. you know we can live in what if scenarios forever and ever and never be happy with what the actual event turns out to be and it's easy sure. to get lost in that what if world um mm. but for now this is the reality and i will do what i can with my reality mm. sure Does anyone want to add to this yeah like, think, how would you see it i sure, i go ahead i think uh, like meeka said the the that uh, apart from like what whatever money or assets we get we also get mm-hmm. how to deal with things from our parents right we learn how to deal with experiences sure. from our parents so Mm-hmm. again that that i mean keep coming back to this that's also a part of my inheritance so uh if failure does eventually knock at my door that's that's a part of life that i mean i would be stupid to not think to think that that would not happen just cuz i have parents who are privileged enough to give away 50% mm-hmm. i'm still going to fail sometimes because that's just how life works but how i deal with it is something that was given to me by my parents as part of my value system as part of okay what do you do and how do you mm. deal with life so i don't mm. think that just having 50% more of the inheritance would have helped me deal with failure as much as maybe l- knowing mm. how to live well would sure which i still have yeah rishi also, wanted to add something oh, no please sorry. please rishi yes yeah. yes ma'am so uh, I, i haven't started earning yet but what i have you know seen dad or even mom for that matter uh, mm. what they do is that uh, they tend to okay, yeah they have contributed to following my promise but uh, what what apart from that they do is the emergency crisis they they tend to you know keep certain amount or for mm. for you know even you know you have an emergency you tend to keep something sure. okay maybe you might require it mm. so i think managing your funds in the right way is also mm. something that your family passes on i mean that i have learned that skill because till date i think dad you know he maintains a diary or an excel sheet he's been the doing since his his earning days so he showed mm. me that this is the thing that i have been doing and he wants me mm. also to do it somewhere down the line you know managing your yes. funds so that you wouldn't require to you know ask or okay obviously we have families i mean they will tend to help us in in when the sure. time the your crisis comes but mm. it is how we rise from that failure is is something that is also being you know passed on by the by our parents to us absolutely um and let's say you wanted to sorry. sorry yeah go ahead i um, wanted to quickly like jump on what rishi was saying but there mm. is like that also that 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 gender stereotype that like oh the, mm. the husband or the man will look after the finances and the woman would just mm. take mm. what comes through but we're also mm. like living in a different world right now where mm. you're most likely living in a double income household and it's as important for women also uh to be financially independent and mm. my dad like mm. will sit down with me and be like no we have to go through your your uh, your statements right now we have to go through your budgets etc and it's still mm. a learning curve for me like i wish i was as organized as i am about my finances but like it's still it's still something that i'm that that's something that i know i want to definitely get a hold of and i don't want to be reliant hmm. on somebody else to sure. handle my finances sure. he's definitely sure. like laughing in the next room as i say this but mm-hmm. um but no uh, that's an important it's, point it's you important. bring in yeah. yeah it's very important that you bring in that sorry aditya you were you were joining the conversation yeah sure. yes. so i i'd say there are two parts for me uh, on the sun side i think one part uh, uh, rishi has already covered fairly well which is about uh obviously your parents give you that starting point in terms of starting to invest for you also mm. uh, you know, mm. uh which is a, a great way to set you on that investment financial saving journey uh, mm. uh because they they put some money aside for you over the years and you know or, or yeah. at some point they expect you to just take over uh so mm. uh, which is which is great uh mm. the second part of the answer and i feel is it's going to differ for a lot of people because basically mm. where where you in life are right now 
so i felt yeah. like for me to stump up the decision was easier because i'm already 5 years into my working career i am already mm. building my personal network all right so sure. i am in a place where i feel i'm comfortable because i'm building my own wealth right mm. i feel it's incredibly brave for someone mm. like vivan to have that same sentiment when he's 17 or 18 years old all right mm. uh, i think i think that so which is why it differs so much uh, mm. and in terms of where you, where in life you are absolutely uh, yeah. and it, it's going to it's going to be different yeah so let's hear from vivan what he thinks about it he's just getting into university and what do you think i was just thinking <laughs> how the audience are throwing questions at me on a saturday morning <laughs> that i'm never talking about and <laughs> my optimistic outlook on life is just being shattered here but i feel that uh <laughs> you know, expectations that my parents have from me is like on a very superficial level that uh, after i uh, like graduate <coughs> something of myself and then like i will need that uh, inheritance like they'll be with me till then but like having like like anything is possible right so um the fact that they are already like willing the fact that he's already willing to like he he gave it when i as i said like 13 or 14 years old so he would have like thought that i can make something of myself that i can manage even without that so mm. i am playing mm. on those notions that if he has so much trust in me then why would i mm. like let failures hold me back sure. so i think sure. that is keeping me going yes nice nice awesome i mean nice so I want to move on, but there's more questions, so let's answer the questions because that's the whole aim of this session. Uh, so we have a question from Minakshi Gupta: How do kids see their peers responding to it? It's very important. I was going to ask you this. What What about your peers responding to this? And also, when do you think that one should sign a pledge? At what level? What's your take on it? When should one be ready to sign a pledge? And they're not connected. But the first one is. What do you, what's your take on like how does your peers respond to it? You go and say, you know what, my parents have given fifty percent of their wealth. What did they say? Did you even share it, or did anyone uh, say anything that made you think? And the second part is when is the right time to actually sign, from your perspective? Anybody? Okay, ma'am. Yeah, so go ahead. I yeah. spoke to a few friends. so they were they first of all they were like oh wow okay there's something like that because you know they weren't aware okay like they they would know a concept of ngos and i think but not you know where you directly pledge in 50% of your wealth so mm. few of them were uh, you know they were like okay wow that's a newer perspective of mm. thinking from the parent side mm. so they they were like okay definitely down the line even you know some of them were interested okay you know we would also love to contribute in whatever way whatever way right mm. and answering the second part what i feel the right age or the right time you know when you can pledge is once you are 100% comfortable with yourself you know you are you have achieved you know your financial aspects you are you are stable in life you know you are mm-hmm. every other aspect you know you are you wouldn't require that much to go on in life i mean mm-hmm. in terms of wealth you know you are i have sufficient amount in the bank i wouldn't want to spend extra on unnecessary mm-hmm. things and that time that's the time mm-hmm. when you you can contribute for a greater purpose mm-hmm. that that's what i personally feel sure urvi do you have anything to add to this i'm just i'm actually thinking because i don't i don't think i've talked to any of my friends mm-hmm. about this because it just didn't i don't know it just didn't mm-hmm. occur to me that this was something cuz you don't Uh, at least matlab i don't remember talking about uh, inheritances or anything like that because again mm. uh, having gone to a certain mm. kind of school you come up you build certain kind of friends and at least who are similarly at a similar level of privilege i would mm. say uh, mm. largely so you know mm. you you have that sort of unsaid assurance that we are comfortable right now and we will be just cuz again just by what you having been born in a certain family mm. and having that laid out for you so i don't think i've actually had this conversation i do think it will be an interesting one uh now that mm. this is live and i'm guessing some of my friends are watching so i think this is going to be an interesting right. conversation <laughs> but uh the second question i think uh as much as i would like to say 
and I do agree with that also that you know like Rishi said at the point where you feel secure in yourself is when you you should go ahead and make the pledge but I also sure. think that eventually whether you like it or not you are going to die right so mm. it, there's something going to happen to your wealth right mm. you, you mm. are I mean whether it's even if it's not too much you are going to accumulate mm. something over the course of your life mm. so um, and I would hope that at least personally speaking for myself I would hope that during the course of my life if and mm. when I start a family or if and when I have a next generation I would have equipped themselves equip them to you know be independent so i would sure. I, w- i would hope that i can at this <clears throat> point in my life right now when mm. i've barely started a career i can pledge it right now and i trust myself to kind of work towards that because sure mm. yeah that great um I, just just to add to that i also feel like a lot of the current pledgers are also the you know if you look at the median age at which they are which is like quite interesting because mm. most of them probably are you know somewhat at the peak of their careers or nearing retirement and things like that mm. but like could mm. we say not at the end of their lives you know sure. and which is mm. uh which is what's interesting about living my promise because you're 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 putting that statement in your lifetime where you're saying okay now mm. i'm not on my deathbed and saying okay now mm. i have nowhere to go i can't take this mula up with me so i'm going to leave mm. it be which is mm. i mean uh, you know I, not to say that taking anything away from that but i think it's a sure. far bigger and more courageous move to somewhere in during your life say that mm. i'm making this uh, making this pledge because that's going to change the outcome of how you live uh, right. the sunset of your life as well mm. Uh, mm. Uh, so yeah i mean i'm sorry i'm an ad guy so i'm i'm just uh, 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 crediting uh, living my promise and uh, making it advertising for them you doing your job that's fine mm. <laughs> but honestly uh, i yeah. i think i think they're on to something right so i mean just taking this forward i just want to ask again each one of you is there one cause that you're deeply passionate about and you believe that actually that can change the world that's one part of the question and connected to that i'm going to just add a second part that how do you sort of engage young minds like you young people like you into giving what are your thoughts on it what would you say about that it would be great to hear some of your ideas and how would you engage your friends or you know talk about this more freely to people like what is it that you're deeply passionate about if you do have one cause that can change it would be great to hear from all of you So for me uh, the arts is extremely important um, and mm-hmm. I think seeing the lack of arts education in schools you can see then the impact it has in adulthood uh, mm-hmm. for me I I I think that arts is a beautiful tool to help with empathy to help with mental health to help with mm. um with how you view the world um I think mm. you know we we live sometimes with blinkers on and by experiencing different forms different genres you're exposed to a wider range i you mm. can travel to places by just sitting in your chair and mm. i think that's something that an experience new people experience new uh new opinions and when you're constantly surrounded by the same people all the time you're living in a bubble but the arts mm. really allows you to to explode through that uh and that mm. that that's how i see myself i feel like the arts really helped me find my people find my um find people who accept you for the weirdness and mm. when you're not allowed to be weird when that's all you are it can be mm. stifling when you're supposed mm. to follow this particular path so there are lots of people who i think just need that platform and there's so many phenomenal arts organizations out there who mm. need that support and mm. i work in fundraising specifically for these for arts organizations because i believe yes. that, you know you need to have some kind of organization in this sense so i've made i made that my 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 career for now um but uh, there are so many ways that i love engaging with uh, young people especially people around our age or older like under mm. 40 mm. see how can you like how can you getting mm. uh, stay involved mm. um So there are like multiple ways um i think the important thing is first figure out like what you're interested in there are so many nonprofits across the country across sure. the world mm-hmm. that that you are that connect with your passion mm-hmm. if you're interested in climate change interested in sports interested interested in the olympics mm-hmm. like 
Mm. They, they they need money, and if you have mm. that money, even if it's like a hundred rupees right now, that's all mm. you can afford to give. Give mm. it because that hundred mm. rupees actually adds up and sure. can make a huge and can either close that gap that this organization needs. It can and yeah. Additionally, what you all what people think of is also that oh, I can only give a hundred rupees. That's not enough. But what mm. if you continue giving? If you sustain that giving over time, you're going to earn. You're going to earn mm. more. You're going to get raises. Maybe you will mm. have a more disposable income, expendable income. Mm. And mm. when you do, you'll be able to give more. I've seen so mm. many people who've started off uh, at a previous theater company I was working at. I there were people who'd been donors who'd been there for like over twenty years. They started mm. off giving probably like fifty dollars, and by the end of mm. it, they were giving like half a million. So mm. obviously, like you know, you're going to go through that trajectory, and as long as you you stay with that organization, you stay connected. That's really important. There are I sure. know a lot of people are like, where do I start? How do I get involved mm. with giving? Mm. There's so many wonderful ways. One is like you can volunteer. Um, there's a lot of information online. They have annual reports. If you're someone who likes to do your research before giving, read those annual reports. See what this organization has been involved with. See who's giving. Talk mm. to your mm. friends. A lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of organizations benefit from peer pressure. Why do people put out sure. list mm. donors? Is because then you can see, oh, my friend is giving. Oh, I think I can also do that. Um, peer pressure works. Um, mm. And then, yeah, you know, there's there's so many, it, and during COVID, I think we've seen so many people be sure. so creative yeah. about giving, right? Like you're starting mm. online bake sales, you're giving people, and and then giving all those proceeds to COVID relief. You're volunteering your time. I had a friend who's volunteering her time working with an orphanage on Zoom and just like hanging out with the kids mm. on Zoom. And I was mm. like, what a wonderful way of using your time. Mm. So lots of ways that you can do it. It doesn't have to be financial for now. It could just be personal time. I mean, I've seen so many of my peers who have decided to leave their corporate jobs and join nonprofit work. And that is equally important just to, mm. to give back. So many ways that you can, you don't, it doesn't have to be financial, but you just got to figure out what, what excites sure. you. what keeps you yeah. going what keeps you passionate mm. and yeah yeah yes vivan you want to say something about uh, what you care about yeah. right I, i think i'll take the second part of the question first and then like mm-hmm. get like, into the first one i think uh, a way we can encourage giving is like something my dad always says is that you are most clearly defined by the five most like the five people you surround yourself most with so mm-hmm. uh, my like my family is very into giving my my grandfather he every mm-hmm. morning he would make it a point that he would like feed a uh, chana to the pigeons and he would feed uh, the cows in the area like some kind of food before he like started his day's work every mm-hmm. day he did that every day and even like after he passed away he told my mom to keep on doing that every day my my grandmother mm-hmm. at the end of every month whatever saving she has left she would give it to like our house help to spend on their mm. stationery and my dad i think since 2009 he's not stopped giving so mm. um, i think i have got it from them and it doesn't need to be your family if you aren't as uh, like privileged as i am to have uh, people who are constantly giving you can always surround mm. yourself with friends like your chosen family who who sure. will inspire you to uh, want to give mm. there are so many ways you can give i i, I think giving even something as simple as happiness rather than as meeka said it doesn't have to be financial if you're just like giving someone a smile on their face that's as good as giving like 50% sure. of your wealth i would say but sure. uh, that's my way of looking at it and my cause it's not a cause as such but something that really triggers me is uh, when people put other people down i feel the moment you stop focusing on what others are doing and look at Mm. what you want to do and how you want to go where you want to go i think that's the mm. moment that like we reach equilibrium and everyone is fine with what they're doing and that's what matters mm. yeah sure yeah i Would think we, uh, yeah. no i'll just i think i'll also take the second part of the question uh, forward because i think it's important to kind of change the narrative around giving because mm. uh, especially for people like us who have had a head start in life sure it's is it really 
is it is it giving or is it giving back you know mm. because mm. we 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 my dad likes to say that we we are a product of the subsidies of the world which we are mm. because we've had a lot mm. of mm. um mm. investment into us so so kind mm. of changing the narrative around giving and not looking at it as not looking at it as a choice because yeah you know mm. when you reach a certain point in life or when you reach a certain point in society it it should mm. almost be uh, uh given that you give back mm. uh, what you received so making mm. it a family thing you know spending sunday mm. um helping out or you know just essentially changing the narrative around giving is i think mm. a good way to and and i think uh, my generation or our generation is actually doing that they they mm. they're looking at they're kind of analyze like critically looking at what it means mm. to give and what it means mm. to what what does charity mean to them what does mm. giving mean to them so i think we we are on our way there i'd like to say sure sure yeah rishi aditya we i would say almost uh, close to the time but i would love to hear from the two of you yeah so yeah. just coming in on that i think uh, particularly for our generation we've cracked the code on okay you know of course i love the way when we said my net worth is a bag of chips and some peanuts but <laughs> being cognizant of that uh, there are so many other things that we can give uh, because mm. we had starting point we have been able to equip ourselves with certain skill sets uh, we've been able to equip ourselves with uh, you know the soft matter of life right like there are so many things that are beneficial can be beneficial to other people So I think I mm. see a lot of young people giving their skills, their time, which is extremely mm. precious. Uh, sure. And I feel yeah. like nobody really talks about that as much. But time mm. as a commodity, if you are mm. able to give your time, mm. it's valuable. Uh, and and it's in life. I mean, mm. you know, uh, however young or old you may be, uh, everybody, uh, you know, time is extremely precious. So if you mm. if you are making that investment in someone an organization an individual whatever it may be uh mm. number one you're going to be fulfilled but mm. uh and number two you're doing so much more for that person sure yeah rishi yes ma'am so uh, mm. uh what i uh, mean what happened uh, sorry so uh, mom my mom i like to speak about her in this context uh i would answer the second part over here first why because um, you know and my mom is she's a yoga instructor and mm. uh, she has been you know teaching going to you know teach yoga to this uh, organization it's a orphanage what happens is that you know people around me also friends ask you know teaching for free or you know contributing but mm. you know the only thing that my mother told me that time you know she told me mm. is like uh, my payment is you know when i see a smile on their face i mean that really touches your heart exactly like i don't need any money from them it's like once i'm contributing something the society has done so much for me like why not you know uh, it is it is somewhat you know it comes to our duty it comes to yeah. it's like it's like a it's a kind of a gift that somebody is you know providing yeah. their time providing happiness so that you see a smile on someone else's face like your day is made it's like i don't need absolutely i don't need any money for that but the happiness yeah. that you provide to the other people with your yeah. skill set with your yeah. with the time you're putting i think that's what that's what is important i think our generation should you know focus more yeah. on contributing to such activities yeah. yeah making money is totally fine that is you know it's, it's up to there's no there's no issue in that but i i personally would encourage everybody to you know contribute somewhere down the line anything you know sure. do anything as as you can you know to help you know society can you know help in their upbringing hmm. it's been lovely hearing all of you i mean we're almost running out of time we're almost five minutes over time but i would <coughs> still invite people to please look at living my promise pledge and do sign up and do ask us for questions and we can help you understand this better there's one last thing i'm going to go back to from where we started i'm a parent too and i'm a part of the promiser as well we always want to do the best for our children right and we keep saying 
let's do this let's do that let's get this there's a list of so many and it's been very very encouraging to hear from all of you on your thoughts on your perspectives but i'm going to ask you one last sum up round that where do you really think parents like us should draw the line i would love to hear from you and then we can close with that thinking i can start the loaded yeah. question loaded yeah question. it is absolutely <laughs> but uh, i think uh, this goes back to kind of uh, what i was saying about uh, your general family dynamic because i mm. think uh, for at least personally for me i don't think there's a line or mm. it needs to be drawn because ever since i've grown up i've been a part of whatever decisions or whatever uh you know uh conversations that are happening and i think uh, so what the line that we're talking about is essentially not a line but a conversation that needs to happen between the parents and the child as to what are the child's needs and expectations and what are the parents needs and expectations and where can you meet in the middle because i don't think sure. at least personally i don't think that there's a clear black and white that you can draw okay i'm going to support you till your graduation and then nothing because <laughs> i don't think that at least that's not how uh, i've been brought up so i think it's a it's a it's a conversation mm. and it's it's mm. a very difficult one but it is a conversation that needs to happen sure anybody else want to add to this yeah we got i second i mute. second yeah. everything that would be said i second it that's yeah. my answer right <laughs> and uh, personally for me i think it's been about my parents have been like since i've been young and they've been they are the 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 thing that they've been looking at is for helping me find my thing and they were like their mm. their whole thing was we'll support you till you help you to till you till you think you found your thing uh and mm. and um, you know so that involves obviously a lot of investments right because as a child mm. uh mm. you know you have to put your child through 50 things uh mm. to see what finally sticks uh mm. put them in different experiences atmospheres environments all of that mm. but i feel like for and I, again this is just purely anecdotal for me my parents drew a line when they thought that i had found my thing and i was able mm. to kind of go from there sure awesome yeah uh vivan you were going to say something yeah, yeah. i think everything they said just sums it up but like i think something mehika said at the beginning about uh it's their money right it they can do what they want with it i think they have already given us a lot i mean mm-hmm. but i think when everyone who is going to be like affected by it positively or negatively in the long run is like at peace with it i think that's where you can draw the line like you shouldn't compromise someone else's like because it might not affect me but let's say like my grandmother if uh, like my dad tells her about it she might be like oh how can you do this to vivan or something like that so uh, uh, <laughs> where where everyone like affected is mm. not like opposed to it i think that's where you can draw the line sure awesome rishi closing comments Yes, ma'am. Totally. Uh, I mean, for me, I think personally, what I feel is that um, a, a, any parent. I mean, I would take example of my dad, my mom and dad both. Mm-hmm. They would uh, consider drawing the line. Is is that when you know they feel that their son is you know properly he's he's picked up his career, he's started mm-hmm. to you know earn. That that's the time you know it's like I would I would only personally tell it's okay. You can you know. if you can take your step back and now it's 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 my time to you know take the stage on you know go ahead in life so i mean i personally would you know draw the line if even if they don't so yeah. i mean if that's another and it's pretty casual Fair, yeah. it's it's a pretty casual yeah. it's more of a conversation thing okay yeah. that between everybody at home it's it's, it's a normal talk now it's not like it's not considered a yeah. kind of a, a what do you call yeah. a, most of it it's not considered kind of a societal impact that okay yeah what will sure. others think okay yeah. that you know mm. his his parents have you know not funded him or but mm. it's it's totally casual i mean i totally support mm. and you know and happy and i'm happy you know where they have and how they have brought me up totally so that molds mm. you mm. right so thank you thank you very much for such an engaging conversation this morning 
and uh, i hope lots of parents have heard this and their fears have gone out of their minds and now you know hearing from the horses now they really know now what is to be done so thanks so much for coming in on a saturday and joining us it's been really an eye opener for many of us and once again please do visit our page to understand more livingmypromise.org and have a lovely weekend and wishing you all of you the very best in what you're pursuing and our best wishes and good luck for you thank you so much for engaging thank us you. thank you thank, thank you, you very much. much it was so wonderful much. it was bye. great meeting all of you bye senior bye, bye.